So let's look now at graphing rational functions. And what we're going to do is use all the skills that we've learned in this chapter to sketch an accurate graph of a rational function showing any asymptotes, holes, and intercepts. And that's what we're going to have to draw on, all of our knowledge of rational functions to graph that function. And really, it's just a step-by-step -step process to graphing a rational function. First thing we need to determine any vertical asymptotes. Once we have those, we can determine the horizontal asymptotes. And then we can plot these on our graph with a dotted line. We can also determine the intercepts and any holes if they exist, and then plot those values as well. And that's just the same concepts we've been doing. The next step is a little bit trickier, but what we want to do is we want to determine what happens to the graph near an asymptote. So we're going to plot some values in a table of values near the asymptotes to help us find out what happens with the graph. And we're going to see that when we do our example. And once we then know what happens to our graph, we can connect our points and draw a smooth curve. So let's put this all into practice looking at this function. x squared plus 5x plus 6 over x squared minus 9. And remember, the first thing we always want to do is factor if possible. And this will allow us to determine any asymptotes and any holes that might exist in the function. And some pretty easy quadratics here to factor. So there we have our function in factored form. And what we can see right away is that the x plus 3 will cancel out, and we're left with a function of x plus 2 over x minus 3. From that information, we can determine some of the properties of this graph. And our first one that we notice here is we have a hole at that term that cancels out at x equals minus 3. Minus 3 term cancelled out. We also know we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, the term that doesn't cancel out. And that will allow us to put that vertical asymptote on the graph. Remember, the asymptote will go in as a dotted line, like so, at x equals 3. There's our vertical asymptote. Now the hole is at x equals negative 3. But what we want to determine is the coordinates of the hole. And it's pretty easy to determine the coordinates, but we just have to put it into our simplified function. And when we put negative 3 in there, we're going to get a y value equal to negative 3 plus 2 over negative 3 minus 3, which tells us we are at negative 1 over negative 6, or just 1 sixth. And that'll tell us the coordinate of the whole at x equals negative 3 and y equals 1 sixth. So we go to that point on our graph, x equals negative 3, y equals 1 sixth, and we're going to put a hole like so. There is the hole in our function. Well, we've determined the holes, the vertical asymptote, Let's determine the horizontal asymptote. And again, this horizontal asymptote, we just take our function, divide everything by the highest power of x, and then set x to infinity and determine what's left. So our highest power of x in this case is obviously x squared. So we're dividing all of our terms by x squared. And after we've done a few of these, we're going to see how straightforward this is. When we simplify this down, we'll be left with 1 plus 5 over x plus 6 over x squared over 1 minus 9 over x squared. We set x to infinity, which means all of these terms are going to disappear or equal zero, and we're going to be left with a value of one. So our horizontal asymptote is at y equals one. And again, we can now take that and we can put this on our graph with a straight line, like so. And what I'm gonna do on my graph is I'm actually gonna adjust the scale here because I want some smaller numbers. So we're just gonna change the scale here and make 
three squares equal to one. There's our scale. That'll adjust this point slightly. So we'll just move this hole. Instead of being at that point, just goes a little bit up because we want to be at negative three and one sixth. And so our hole is going to be like so. So when we're doing our graph, we just adjust as we need to. And there we have our vertical, horizontal, and holes on the graph. Well, from here, now we have to determine any intercepts. And what I'd like you to do is pause the video and see if you can determine the x and y intercepts of this function. So if we're trying to determine the x-intercepts, there's the two points, negative 2, negative 3. But we have to remember that x equals negative 3 is already a whole. So the only value we need to consider for our intercept is the coordinate, negative 2, 0. There's an x-intercept for this function. Y-intercept, we'll set x equal to 0. Pretty easy. Go back to the original function. And we'll get 6 over negative 9 which of course reduces down to two thirds and our y-intercept will be at zero and negative two thirds. And now we can put those points on our graph. So negative two, zero is right there and zero, negative two thirds is right here. So we're getting more and more points on the graph. Well, now what we have to do is determine what happens as this graph approaches the asymptotes. What happens as it gets closer and closer to x equals 3? And this is where we're going to do our table of values and try to determine values close to x equals 3 and find out what happens to our graph. So let's take this and create a table of values. And I'm going to create a horizontal table of values. And we're just going to pick x values near the vertical asymptote. And our vertical asymptote is 3. So I'm going to pick an x value that is 2.999 and see what happens to our graph. And when we put 2.999 into that graph, and you can verify this on your calculator, you're going to get a value that's very negative, a big negative number. And you can verify this on your calculator. You could also test 3.01 on your calculator, and you're going to get a number that's very large or very positive. Now, these values close to the asymptote will tell us the behavior of this graph. So as we approach 3 from the left side, so 2.99 would be approaching from the left side like this. What happens to our graph is we get very, very small, very, very negative. And as we approach 3 from the right side, we get very, very big. And that's going to tell us the behavior as we approach our vertical asymptote. Now we use the same idea if we make our x values very, very large. So let's make x 1,000 and negative 1,000. And this 1,000 and negative 1,000, if you put it in there, and again, this is just a calculator exercise, we're going to get 1.005 and a few other decimals. If we put negative 1,000 in there, we'll get 0 0.999. And this will tell us as we get large in the x, we get closer to 1, but it'll be a value larger than 1. Both of these get closer to 1, coming from either the larger or the smaller side. Now, what does that mean? Well, so positive 1,000, as we get closer to positive 1,000, we get closer to 1, which means our graph is going to go like so. We're going to get closer and closer to 1. And if we get closer and closer to negative 1,000, our graph is going to go like so. Now we're almost there. We now have our end behavior at our asymptotes. We have all of these points. But we still want to choose one other value that allows us to plot this graph. And what we want to be concerned with is let's find some x value 
that we can put a point somewhere up here. And it really doesn't matter what x value you choose. I'm going to choose x equals 8. So fire 8 into your function. And when you put 8 in for x, again, more calculator exercise, you put 8 in for x, we're going to get a y value of 2. And this will now be our final point on the graph. At x equals 8, we are up at y equals 2, and we get a coordinate that looks like so. And now what this allows us to do is it allows us to plot the graph and do an accurate sketch. So we just connect our end behaviors. We get to our hole. We skip over the hole through the other coordinates, connect to our end behavior, and there's what our graph's going to look like. On the other side, we just need to adjust our end behaviors here a little bit. So we'll just get rid of those, but they'll get closer and closer, and we'll go through this coordinate, get closer and closer to the asymptote, and there's our arrow on the end. So there's our sketch of this graph. A lot of information, a lot of details to get an accurate sketch. And remember, we can always verify this by using your graphing calculator. And we're going to do more of these graphs in class.